Hello, I'm Holly Holland. I'm the little green high over here. Um, I am a professional learning specialist with NCCE, and I am also here with. I am Jenna Dawson. I'm the other little bitmoji. <laughs> Um, I have a scarf on in that picture, but it is hot and steamy here. Holly and I are both from the Tampa, Florida area, so it is hot and muggy. Yes, it is. So we're super excited that you guys are here and um, would love for you guys to uh, hopefully get a little bit more information on how easy Book Creator can be used inside your classrooms. I know some people even like to uh, use it for their personal life in some ways, but um, this is just a quick little overview that we have that we're going to be going through. And if you were to go to that bit.ly, which I can see Jenna just posted in the chat again, um, it will take you to a wakelet. So here it says click here. So you can click on in and it'll take you to just some of those resources that I'm going to be referring to um, throughout our uh, session today. All right, so I'm going to click on back and we're going to go get in started. So we've started the recording. Awesome. All right. So um, the little overview that you saw in your Book Creator book from us is that uh, we're going to talk real quick about what is Book Creator, how to access it, it is free for everybody, and um, what are some of the Book Creator features, and we're going to talk about how you can share and invite others into your Book Creator accounts or libraries per se. And um, we're going to finish up and hopefully have some time for management tips, which are very helpful. All right, so book creator. I um, I would love to see like inside the chat, like how familiar are you guys with cre book creator? Have you heard of it? Have you like participated and engaged in one before? Are are you kind of creators with book cre um, book creator? Love. Go ahead and as I start explaining through what book creator is, ooh, um, go ahead and feel free to post it in the chat. All right, so Book Creator, like I said, it's a simple free tool for creating awesome digital books. Now this tool offers teachers and students multiple ways to uh, present their content. It's uh, always, or it, uh, it is provided uh, entertainment and awesome presentation tools for students from kindergarten all the way through high school. Now, just to give you just some uh, a little introduction, a little bit more about Book Creator is that these digital materials really provide all these multiple different ways for students to access and process information. So students can listen and they can read and interact with their assignments in different ways as they demonstrate their learning. And so here is just a few examples that, you know, schools create books. Um, students can create books, and I love this this sixth grader over here about the respiratory system. I don't know about you, but that seems a lot more in interesting. All right, so let's go on and just check out some of these features that uh, Book Creator has. Is um, there's multimedia aspects to enhance the support of all of our learners. So for our visual learners, you have images and pictures, um, photographs that can be uh, brought in through a Bing Safe Search. Or you can also add in some text. There's 50 different fonts. Our tactile learners, there's, um, again, they can add in text and they can use their pens and draw and uh, mark them up, uh, the pages all up. And then our auditory learners, they're each something that's embedded inside Book Creator. Each book has an, an option for it to be read aloud. You can record your voices or record your own videos or import your own vid um, in videos like YouTube and things like that. So really, it's hitting all types of learners um, that we have inside our classrooms. Now, the devices, I, I'm super excited because, you know, sometimes some of the you know, things that we uh, want to use with our students are not always, you know, that easy for them to access. But really, Book Creator is available on Chromebooks, on computers and laptops and iPads. Of course, there's an app for that. <laughs> and it's available on all different types of browsers. So when you're sharing these, um, either these uh, presentations that you have for your students or like interactive books, it's very accessible um, on many different platforms. 
All right, so let's talk real quick about how you could access it, and then I'm going to take you in and show you just some examples before we dive in, in into creating. OK, and again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead and post it in the chat. We have Jenna in there answering some questions and we're here to help you. All right, so in order for a student to log in, they have to be connected to a class. So, I mean, it's not something that a student's going to go and just start creating all on their own. They will be able to go to bookcreator.com or if you have Clever, um, and then they can sign in using their Office 365 accounts or their Google account. But there's like a little student tab, so they sign in through their Office 365 account, and it's going to prompt them immediately to join a library. And so the teacher will be sharing a specific library code to the students. So I know some people are like, or oh, can they just do whatever they want? No, you're going to be able to see everything that they're working on, which is great. Now a teacher login logs in the same way that you know not on the student tab so you would go to bookcreator.com and then you can sign in on the teacher side and you can sign up you know with Google Office 365 or an email. I know our district we have clever so we're able to click in and go through clever but that's how you just easily sign in which will help you sign up for a free book creator account. It's really that easy. Now, when you sign in um, or sign up, which is the same thing, uh, it will ask you just, you know, some questions. It's going to want to know a little bit about you, you know, like what are some of the grades that you teach and the subjects that you teach? each and then you're going to give a title to your library now i know i told you that it's free but of course you know there's always you know sometimes there's the the paid versions of it so what i'm going to be sharing today is the free way to go through it right ladies and gentlemen if it's free it's for us <laughs> so when you log in and you are giving your information and you are going to be asked to name your library so you will name your library whatever you would like i called mine mrs holland's library but when you log in and you la label it or name your library you will uh, open up to your library now yours if you just got started will probably not have any books you won't have any books but let's go ahead and then if you guys can follow me we're going to dive into my library so this is mrs holland's library and um, I have been having a blast during this e-learning time working with teachers and students and creating um, a bunch of fun interactive textbooks and um, information pieces and things to collaborate with students. So this is my library and I just kind of, you know, just like it sees it, you know, your books are on your shelf and you get to click through. And um, if I wanted to work on one, I could hover over it. And of course, we all know what the pencil means. I can edit this book. So if I wanted to edit this ladybug book that one of my students had created, I select it and I love this page feature because it's kind of gives you like that overview of all the pages. So I'm going to select that page view Ta -da! and I can see exactly what my students are working on. So this student uh, actually had a they're um, a, going into first grade and they had two week project to learn all about ladybugs and they watched videos and read text on Mayan and they had to fill out a RAND chart which had like the different categories and then they were able to um, type it out and record their voice. So what I'm going to do, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of preview um, this for you. And it is available inside that Wakelet with resources, but I have already published it, but I'm going to go ahead and press play. And check out how cool this is. The student was so giddy and like squealed with excitement that their all their hard work turned into this awesome professional looking book. And so they even got to record their voice. What ladybugs look like? Ladybugs have six legs with claws and two antennas. <laughs> now, one cool thing about uh, Book Creator is when students are able to record their voice, um, this student actually is reading through exactly what is on their book. But sometimes you might have, the students might be just posting their voice, 
like on this page, Ladybug Lifecycle, there's no words. Um, so they, you can enable the transcript to get started. And when you click the transcript, it will read it, or you can visually see exactly what the student is saying, which is really great to um, accessibility for all of our students. I worked at a school with DHH students, and so um, it was really helpful to be able to add in um, the transcript and be able to edit and make sure it's exactly what the student says. Today we're going to talk about the ladybug's life cycle. All right, so um, that's just a quick little example of uh, a kindergarten first grade example of how to do a little research research project. So inside uh, Book Creator, students are going to join your library and they can create books on their own. Another thing that you could do with Book Creator is a lot of teachers like to create templates. And so this is actually a template. So you see it says names, uh, life events. So if I'm going to click on this book and I'm going to show my pages, as the teacher, I was able to set up this book and I kind of left it really open because I want the student to be able to come in and take this book into their own library. And I'll tell you what that means in just a second. But I set up a little um, a template for the students because we were reading a text about Martin Luther King and Amelia Earhart and their childhood um, experiences really shaped who they were and their character as they got older. So that was actually a writing prompt that we were working on. And so the students were able to copy this into their own library and um, and then be able to come in and they can come in and start editing. They can start typing. They can add in their own text and be able to type in um, what they type their text and move it around and type out what they were working on. All right, so that is something really cool. And with it being inside my teacher library, um, the students are able to come and copy the book into theirs and then create it all on their own because it's a copy and I can check it out. All right, so that is another thing that you could do. So students can create their own textbooks inside your library. They can also get templates from your library. And on the wakelet, there are a few more examples about a hammer shark. And then uh, um, there was actually a one that has where students were collaborating on one book. So here is an example of um, where uh, yes the memory book is great this is uh where students can collaborate on one book so the only students that i have and i'm going to click the little share button you can uh, enable collaboration now that's not one of the free features but during the e-learning time right now uh, book creator has allowed everyone to have 90 day trial with collaboration um, it used to be only 14 days but now you can enable your collaboration i only have 36 more days but with that um setting it up as a collaboration page or a collaboration book i could come in and with my pages i told them what specific page they were going to be working on and then they could come in and uh, beautify it and they were writing about what superhero or what superhero power do they gain this year? And so then they could come in and they have that specific page. Now, I this is kind of like an advanced uh, feature to show you guys, but whenever you do set up a collaboration page, um, this is new. Book Creator has now made it where not everybody can collaborate. You can actually change and pick specifically who inside your class. So these are all the students that have joined my class. So if I wanted Maria, Lauren, Donna, and Heather to be able to, let's just say, collaborate now, they are the only ones that can come in and my other students can view it, but they are the only ones that will be able to edit it which is really cool to have that extra little layer of um, protection on your books, I guess you could say. <laughs> so I know I just went over features and you guys are probably still having some questions and thank you guys so much for putting it, um, putting those thoughts and comments inside the chat. 
but um, we can go through um, as many more examples as you guys want a little bit later. But what I would love to do next is kind of get into the how to's with it. OK, so we know how to access our book, our, how to access Book Creator now by going to bookcreator.com and logging in. We now know that in, when you um, name your library, you're going to have a library space. And then we saw some examples. But let's go into the more how to's with it. OK, these features and how to create. So inside my library, I know I'm inside my library because I see Mrs. Holland's library. I can click this little down arrow and I actually had my teachers. They came and they they joined my library because they wanted some of the templates. So um, but you can see here I can see Maria. She grabbed that book and I went to that student's library. And it brought me straight to what she pulled in into her library. This is exactly like what you could do with your students. Then I would be able to come in, check out and see what the students working on. She hasn't added anything, but I could see what they were working on. Um, one cool thing I thought was and I see someone said something about assessments and uh, small group. What's really great is they recommend if you were going to leave a comment, you can actually come in, leave a little comment for the student and be like, Wow, uh, looks like you are working hard. Keep it up. And so then my students would know that they see, oh, Mrs. Holland left me a message. OK, so OK, she likes what I'm doing. Cool. And then even book creators suggest once the student sees it, they can, they can either leave it there or they can delete it and keep working. But you know you gave specific feedback to the students um, inside Book Creator. I absolutely felt like that was such a cool, huge thing that as students are working, you can see exactly what they're working on. This is another uh, teacher that I was working with. Uh, she got her little pages going, the Brass family. And I can again come in here, grab a shape and leave her a little note. But I, I love what she's been working on. And so that's it's pretty cool and it's pretty um, safe that you have connections to everything that they're building. All right. Now, if I wanted to kind of leave my Mrs. Holland's library, I can click up here and go to my dashboard. All right. So the three lines at the top, um, uh, I can click and ta -da, now I'm in my dashboard. Now, with your dashboard, we're going to first focus in on the libraries. Ooh. And then we'll go to this tab called resources. Ah, but we'll talk libraries first. OK, so with the free version, remember free is for us. Free version, you will get one library and you get 40 books. So right now, as I've gone to the three dots and I'm in my dashboard, I can see I have 15 of my 40 books. Every time a student creates a book, it's taking up one of the ones in your library. We'll talk management tips in just a little bit, but the 40 books right now I have 15 and I have 27 authors who have joined my uh, library with me. All right. Now there's a ways that you can uh, manage that uh, where you can archive books and get 40 new books and things like that. you can combine books. And so we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but I love the fact that they also give you my books and notice it's got a lock on it. It's private. So you have your Mrs. Holland's library or whatever you called it, and this is what your students will see on how they can access it. But you can also come over here and you get 40 other books that you want to kind of work on. So you guys saw my library. Let's go into my books. This is actually locked down where I'm still working and I don't want to move it over to my library just yet. So here I have my me on the map. And so I was creating a little template for my students to be able to work with me on the map. I was going to make one example for my own, but I'm not ready yet. Here's an idea map I'm not ready to share with, but this one is super cool. And I saw Jenna posted that in the chat. Like a lot of people have been using memory books and um, this, let me just show the pages. Ah, so cool. I didn't create this. Someone else did and they put it in a template thing and I was like, yes, please. So all I had to do was press copy and check out all these pages that are already created for me. What? So this is a yearbook 2020. I'm going to go back 
and um, but I'm not quite ready. I want to add a little bit more spice to it, and I was going to send it out to my students and see if any of them wanted to have a fun project for the summer. But right now, if you remember, I'm inside my my books, and so this is locked down. I can share it, and so the little icon down here, sharing options, oop, not the sharing options, my bad. In the book options, this other little icon, I can move it or I can copy it. And so I'm going to move this, move it, and it gives me a little ideas of, okay, where do you want to move it to? Just like in, you know, where OneDrive, we want to move it from this folder to another one. You just decide where you want it to go. And so now, oop, you see, it's gone. So when I go back to my libraries and I go, in, oh, there it is, it's in my library. Yay, so then my students will be able to view it and grab it and use it. Cool. So hopefully you guys are um, loving and seeing some ideas and your juices are flowing on how you could use this um, for either your your own presentations or um, sharing it with students. I'm super excited. Now, if you wanted to create a new library, it's going to give you a little prompt. Hey, you only get one, but you can upgrade. So you can click upgrade and there are there is a paid version. So sometimes people use their, you know, their teacher money or whatever. But I mean, you can definitely work the 40 books many different ways. And so just wanted to show that to you guys now. The shared with me section is actually um, not my own libraries, but libraries that people have shared with me. So if anybody starts creating and they want to share some books, I would love to because, you know, we like to work smarter, not harder. So my friend, uh, oh, excuse me, Wendy Hurio, she she saw my library and she's like, oh, my gosh, I have to have that vertebrae book. And so she just joined mine and I joined hers and then we just get to kind of share books back and forth because her son is obsessed with <laughs> animals. Um, and so this one over here is a template library. So what we're going to do is um, in a little bit, I'm going to be showing uh, a template or actually, let me see. Um, I was going to say, it, this was actually a template library that Book Creator has created, and this is where I was able to pull that template. And again, you just click the little book options and you can copy it into your own library. There's an alphabet book that someone has created, and it goes by alphabet. And then guess who's reading, which is super cool. So what I'm going to do is at the end of our session today, I'm going to share a code with you guys and then you guys can write it down or actively post it in um, and you can get connected to this template library as well. Now check it out. This started with like 40 authors and now there's over 382 authors and 22 books already ready to be copied into your libraries. Um, to work with. So um, how you would do that a little bit later when I share that code with you, you when you sign into Book Creator, all you have to do is just click into your dashboard, slide down and click join library. Easy as that. You'll type in the code and you will also be connected in that library. Cool. Everybody looking good. Yay. All right. Let's slide over into the resources because I know I shared um, some resources with you uh, through the wakelet. However, I'm going to slide to the resource page and just show you that these resources are actually also available just on bookcreator.com. But inside, when you're logged into your own account, you still have the resources right here at your fingertips. So it breaks down examples by grades all the way through high school and secondary. You can look at and um, check out the resources by subjects, which are super cool, um, it, live examples. But I really highly suggest you guys scroll down into your resources, and this is like amazing. These are created by Book Creator. You wanna learn how to embed content? Oh, this is the one for you differentiated learning, this one I'm obsessed with. 50 ways to use Book Creator in your classroom, amazing. I mean, we did, Jenna and I were working with Book Creator with literacy for our district, reading responses, 15 ways. These books are so cool, and I'm gonna click into the embedding one real quick. And it's just a, a informational book and like a how-to, 
all of these things can be embedded inside a book and it tells you exactly how to do it. It's pretty cool. So you just go on through and read through it and that's all available straight within your resources. So I highly suggest you kind of check it out. They also have their own free webinars there and they have a Facebook group, which I put in the wakelet. I, I suggest you join it. They're always answering everyone's questions and things. So they're super friendly and super ready to um, help uh, anybody. So and so are we. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go back into my library and I love how Jenna posted in. Yep, 60 bucks, not too bad, not too shabby. Um, but let's go ahead and think about, and I apologize, I hope everyone's holding on tight with this book creator wave that we're going through. Um, and But we talked about how you can view, how you can uh, work your libraries and how you can check out resources. But let's just see how you can simply create a new book. All right, so if I was gonna create a new book, I would click up here where it says new book. And then when you create a new book, you can either start with a blank slate or you can use a comic. And now they always say, book creator says, don't be afraid of comic. It's not exactly just a comic book type stuff. It actually gives you um, templates and like little, um, uh, what are these called? Little, what am I trying to say? Panels, that's what they're called, little panels that you can choose. And I used a comic when I, with the little uh, bit.ly that we shared earlier. But if you wanted to, you just tip, type it out. You can click the little plus sign. And with the plus sign, it's called the add. It's to add things like um, text and record your voice and pins. And you can import um, images from Google. Maps is pretty cool. You can upload your own files. Hey, <laughs> you can bring in Google Docs and you can embed like YouTube videos and other um, things uh, inside with the embed. So a lot of cool things you can do by adding. And then after you add something, so I'm going to go ahead and just quickly add a hello. And when I click done, um, you would think that typically like that makes it large, but it doesn't. So right now this is highlighted and they call them the I the inspector. I think that's such a cool word for it. And the inspector basically changes anything that you're highlighting. So here I've highlighted my text and I can click on the inspector. And when I click on the inspector, I can change the top, how large and the size I can move it. So if I did want to kind of bring it out, I can change the alignment. I can make it bold. There's those 50 fonts we talked about. Woo! Maybe I do want to change it. Hey, um, and then I could change the background when you start building. Um, and if you know, you know about the moving things from back to front and things like that. So I could change the background page. I love the little dots, but maybe you want more like a pal. Yeah. So uh, you could just really just have it so much fun. And really the students have all these options too. So sometimes teachers are like, well, how are the students going to know how to use it and things? Well, I would definitely suggest the first thing you would do would be a tell us about who you are. You know, let the kids kind of play in and add some pictures. And, you know, they got to be able to play before they we expect them to bring in some hard content. <laughs> but that's just a little teacher tip. Let the kids play. Let them get the pins, change the colors, and just really have a good old fun time with it. And ta-da! So that's just a quick little way of how you can create. If you want a new page, click new page. You can have as many pages. And I think the lo longest page, largest book that they said was like 9,990 pages. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, at least you know, you got pages to go. <laughs> and so when you go into the page view, you can kind of rearrange them if you want. I like to say you really can't break you can't break it. You can't break Book Creator. I, it has the little undo button, which is uh, very helpful. And ta-da! So now we have a quick little book that we were able to create. And the last thing I'd love to share with you guys, and we'll definitely open it up to some questions or suggestions and love to hear what you guys are kind of thinking about how you could use this, is um, sharing. So I know I mentioned, oh, you can share it with your students. Well, the quickest, easiest way to share with your students is inside your library, you have the invite code. 
And it is simple as clicking the invite code and bam, right there, that's your code. Remember when I showed you inside the PowerPoint, the students would type in their join library code. That's it. So you can post it in your OneNote, you can post it on Teams or um, how, whatever way you communicate things with your students, but that code is gonna stay there and that's my code. So even if you wanted to join my library, hey, that's my code. <laughs> and um, so that's that's the what's great. When students join, I'll be able to see exactly who they are. When they create books, um, they can either use the books I have or um, uh, or I can just start a blank book and they could get in there and start using it. I can see exactly what they have here. So let me backtrack. Students won't create their own books like from scratch like I do. I would give them a book that they can then copy and edit within it. All right. And then they could um, use it. So. Uh, that is just a quick way to show how you can share with your students and the students can use a book and add to it. And I talked about that little collaboration piece where you can assign specific students or everybody can collaborate on the same exact book or the students can come over to the book option and they can copy the book inside theirs and they'll have their own exact copy. All right. And um, just one last thing on with our little icons down here, which I didn't spend a lot of time with, but the book options and the sharing options is there's that publish online. If you wanted to publish your book like I did over here and I can see I published my book, um, I clicked publish online. If you want to publish online, you can publish it. If you don't want it to be published anymore, you would click stop publishing. And um, all it is is you just copy a link and then you get the little link copied. All right. So and that's so you can share specific books out and now you're sharing for your parents, um, sharing with uh, other classmates or sc other schools and you can publish a specific book from a student. Yes, love it. It really does provide that authentic audience beyond just the four, cla four classroom walls or just the 22 students in our class. If you can publish, you can publish it and it will be able to be accessed by um, anybody who has the link. All right, but as I say that, let's talk some management tips, okay? We know our students. So up here at the top is a library setting. So while I said I can publish a book and share it and um, have others be able to view it outside of our library, if I click on the gear, I highly suggest you come on in and check out your libraries. I'm pretty sure you, yep, you can change your library name if you wanted to. You can allow um, them to search on Google. They can edit their own books. Yes, I want them to be able to do that. Students can read each other books. Some teachers don't want them to be able to see each other's or maybe you do want them to see each other's, you know, so that's up to you. Students can enable <laughs> collaboration. I don't really want my students to be able to do that until they're like, I'm ready for them to be able to do that. So I have that toggled off. And then most importantly, uh, if we allow the students to publish their own books online, um, that is a teacher choice, but I have mine toggled off. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna say is, um, Remember how I told you that you have your 40 books? Um, you get as many 40 books as you want. You can archive your library of, thir of 13. You can archive your library of, you know, 40. And when you archive it, it will save it up in here. And then you get 40 new books for your library. All right. Um, and you can always go back and get your archive books if you wanted um, and bring them back in. You can do that so you don't lose them. It's just they kind of get some off the shelf so you can get 40 new books. All right. And you're probably thinking, hey, if I archive it, is it still going to be visible when I publish? Yes, you can publish your whole entire thing, archive it, get new books and everything is still visible. All right. So I know I went through a lot and I'm sorry I took up a lot of time, but let's just go back to the PowerPoint real quick on 
teachers and students log in with their Office 365 account. You can embed content and don't forget to check out those resources. They are amazing. And um, I know Jenna has been posting inside the chat of the resources that we have. It's a book creator, um, a book creator book with on the third page. You'll be able to see the wakelet that um, with all the resources for you guys. All right, so before I open it up to questions, please be sure to come on back uh, next week with Brad Smurstick. He's going to be talking make code in Minecraft education. I am so excited about this one. Jenna and I were just talking about how pumped we are. And be sure to join with the same exact link as well as the week after is going to be um, Scott Ricker, and he's going to be talking about Microsoft Power Automate, which is something that uh, we use in our district, and it's really, really cool. So be sure to come on back and check it out. All right, so I'm going to leave up the resources. Thank you guys so much for joining. And Jenna, I love you. Thank you so much for working and moderating that chat. I'm going to open it up to anybody who has any questions. Um, right now, if you have any questions, feel free to open, uh, ask, uh, come off mute or post it in the chat. <laughs> 